Thanks everyone for jumping in today. Uh, as usual, we have plenty of stuff to discuss. I, um, I got an email from YouTube channel that said that we, we basically generated 6,300 something minutes of watch time. So essentially to whoever is watching these videos, please continue. I think we're, we've essentially saved hundreds of hours of you know, knowledge propagation at this point. And I think it's, it's working quite well. We still need to improve on the timestamps and making sure everyone um, from the teams is recording these calls. I'm repurposing my Zoom account uh, for the use of individual teams to run these calls and automatically record them and upload them to YouTube. So hopefully we can get some sync in there. Starting from the task uh, risk team and Yasan, we're gonna do it uh, starting tomorrow. Hopefully we're going to replicate and, and uh, kind of make a case study for other teams to do the same. All right. So um, the first thing on the agenda, and I'm not going to forget it this time, uh, we need a note taker volunteer that will be able to identify uh, tasks uh, during our conversations today. Uh, basically ask us and interrupt us if this is an actionable task. Um, ask us if there is a responsible person that is on a call and if we have a, an, a person in mind to help us with that task. And then at the end of the call, ideally summarize the list of those actionable tasks that we can further uh, push into Trello and get them rolling. So is there a volunteer? I can jump on that today. All right, sounds great. So the first, time, uh, the first item on the agenda, I put it, why are we here, video promo. And what I meant is um, there is a newcomer that has been with us for two days. Uh, his name is Andrew, and he's an extremely uh, well-versed in vis visualization, but not in terms of like data visualization, but in terms of visual thinking and being able to put concepts together in a highly visual way. And he just messaged me and told me, hey, here's what I'm thinking and here's what like, it looks like in terms of what we're doing, in terms of like, how it resonates to me. And I feel that people will benefit from seeing it. So I highly encourage you to check out the <clears throat> that video call. I'll send a, a follow-up um, link to that call. But basically I had a, a great sync with him and he showed me things like this. Uh, can you see my screen now? So basically it starts from why are we here? It's Kaggle, then, but it's not really why we're here. COVID-19, then it goes into future outbreaks. It goes to medicine and health. Pretty cool stuff. So just heads up on that. The other thing that I wanted to mention is, um, is a cool stuff that I just got from uh, the Geo team and I think visualization team, which is, um, Basically, a first uh, demo of what they're working on, which is a, a geo, um, geo um, visualization of how uh, the current pandemic is, is moving through the uh, countries. It's work in progress, but you can see it's, it's pretty cool. So super excited to see what they're, they will be finishing with this one and integrating in, in other data pieces. All right. Cool, so the, the item on the agenda, uh, the next item is um, introducing coordinators types, onboarding coordinators versus team coordinators. So this is kind of the revelation that we had since yesterday and understanding that there are two distinct responsibilities for uh, onboarding people, the newcomers, um, matching uh, people to specific tasks and teams and the actual things that are happening within the team. So to better vis visualize the process, me and Alicia, uh, we start working on the, um, the, the update to the flow chart that I've originally presented. And it starts from person filling out the website form, then person joining the Slack, person introducing themselves. And here you can see yes, no. So let's assume it's a yes. So connector welcomes and suggests a couple of relevant channels. Person finds relevant channel and then team coordinator onboards this person. 
And we're going to work on creating a second flowchart that is specifically designated for team coordinators. But I would highly encourage if you're listening to this call or if you're on this call and you feel like you could help us with this onboarding process and just matching people to relevant uh, channels and teams, please help us. This is the biggest problem that we're having right now. And we're literally burning through newcomers. We have lots of extremely helpful people and people that want to, to help, but we're not able to efficiently match them to the places where we need them. So that's, that's our first um, not already designated call to action oh, that's on the, on the call. I just realized that I, I wasn't sharing my screen. <laughs> okay, so here's this flow chart. Uh, it'll be better to, to visualize. Person fills out the website form, person joins Slack, person introduces themselves, yes, connector welcomes and suggests couple of relevant channels. Person finds relevant channel, team coordinator onboards this person. All right. So I would say that, uh, again, like we're trying to find uh, these people to be, become onboarding coordinators. And I think the next item, yes, the next item is um, for Daniel to jump in on discussing human resources challenges and team needs. And um, me and Alicia also are trying to figure out the best way to, um, to match team needs. We had an assumption that spreadsheets don't work because that's another thing that you have to worry about. And the revelation of the fact that uh, when you ask people, they answer easily and they formulate the ask. So we're thinking of creating some process that is more conversational. It can start from uh, you know, onboarding coordinators, just messaging people, but then we can eventually build a bot or something in Slack where you just type in, I need blah, 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 here's why I need it. And then it, it routes those people in. But that's, that's a vision. So I'll let Daniel jump in and uh, update us on that. I think, I think, I think really that's, that's the key thing I was going to say is that we're, you know, if, if that spreadsheet continues to have any use, it'll just be for the people who are doing some of that coordination, but that we're hoping to have it so that it's just, it's an, an active pull for, for information from those team coordinators and from the people who are onboarding uh, to, to get them where they need to be. So that's, that's the key thing I would say there. You know, we, we currently still have the, the list that's there, but we'll try, we'll try today to, to talk to each of the different groups and give it to them. Um, and that seems to work pretty well. I've, you know, anytime so far when we've talked to people, we can pretty quickly ping in one of the channels and find the people who have the, the skills that they need. Um, the other thing that's a key HR uh, issue that we're trying to sort out is, you know, so we've got 850 or so people who are on the Slack channel. So we have about 250 of those who are active. Uh, in Slack, and <clears throat> we just need to do a bit of a call out to figure out which are the people who want to be involved, uh, but maybe Slack isn't their medium, but they have useful things they can contribute, or people who just don't know what to do where they come in and they're, they have relevant skills, but they're intimidated by the onslaught of advanced machine learning terminology that they see and say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a project manager, I don't know if I can, you know, sort, sort through that. Um, so, so part of our process is also going to be that, figuring out how do we, uh, how do we encourage people to kind of pull in a little bit further there. Uh, that's, that's about all I have to say on that. Sounds good. The next item is communications quick update. Not sure if Shannon is on a call today. I don't think so, but maybe you, Daniel, can. Sure. So there's a couple. Um, we're starting to get a couple of templates together in terms of progress for communications for doing specific asks. So we have one for computer graphics studios. Um, we have uh, some, some template language that we can use for talking to potential sponsors. Um, and we're starting to get a little bit more aggressive in our outreach using things like LinkedIn to try to find like who are the people at World Health Organization or at other places um, where we can maybe be uh, having conversations. Something that would help for anyone who's, uh, who's either on the team or who's watching this, if you have connections to an organization like that, um, rather than us trying to cold call a whole bunch of places, um, if you have an organization that you think is relevant, then if you let us know um, and can help us have an introduction to them, then, then that's helpful. Yeah, and I think what's, uh, what's going to be important for communications team is actually preparing as much, uh, you know, templates and things that people can reuse. To give you an example, uh, obviously, uh, Brandon um, uh, was working on this presentation for Deloitte. Then, then Sosa said, hey, I want to uh, plug in and do presentation at Stanford. 
where are the slides that I can use? So we basically uh, given him the slides that Brendan was working on, which I think will be very helpful. And then I had a, a researcher from the Facebook AI group uh, saying that, hey, um, we, we would be interested in working together. And he just needs some more like explanation how that could be possible and what are the ways. So again, it's all about creating these assets and repackaging them for, for different entities. So one of the things that I'm gonna make as a, as a to-do for the communications um, is for us to have a Google folder that can have those individual slides so that people can mix and match to make the, the presentation or the piece that, that is, is relevant to them. That's cool. All right. So let's jump in into team reporting. I'm gonna quickly remind the, the structure for that. The high level of progress, quick summary on what you're working on. Uh, time to results, how soon you think you'll be able to showcase some results. And blockers, what do you need help with? So we'll, we're gonna start with risk, risk factors. Maya, go ahead. Hi, <clears throat> uh, we are still figuring out the efficient way uh, <coughs> to get uh, topic modeling and extract the relevant papers only. And that's our main concern at the moment. Uh, we are working very actively to resolve it as soon as possible. And we are also shaping the final outcome that we want to get. So we are kind of putting all the pieces together step by step. Uh, I don't know when we will be capable to show the first plausible extractions, but I assume it will be in a few days from now, I really hope. And I'm going to quickly jump in in here. I think it will be very useful if the team coordinator or team, uh, someone who is trying to organize the team efforts would create a simple list, kind of a timeline of the worst case scenario in terms of how many days or, you know, hours you need to dedicate to certain things for the Kaggle submission so, so that people can understand. <laughs> Sorry. How, how limited uh, we are on the time and basically prioritize towards certain actions. I think that will be very helpful. Maybe, Daniel, we can use that uh, sheet of the um, individual scoring for the teams to add those timelines in there. Um, and basically the timelines will be this, the same for all of four teams. And it's, it's just a matter of uh, individual pieces and estimates for them. Sorry. No, okay. Nice. okay. Okay, we will do that. Thank you. And I'll just quickly say that, that Maya and I went through the, that sheet this morning, and already just from that, there's a lot of ideas that are kind of coming out that'll be, once we've talked to all four of the teams, I think we'll have a, a good sense of where are there are any places where we can kind of cross coordinate or how do we, um, how do we best unify our efforts to, to move things along. And we'll have a much better sense of where are the places that we need to focus where we haven't been versus the places that are pretty rock solid. So thanks. All right, Maya, any blockers? Uh, no, at the moment, actually, <clears throat> uh, we really got help with uh, coordinating. We have Andrew and Janos, who is extremely helpful, and they are great visioners. And uh, we have a team of NLP guys that are really great. So we are kind of happy. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right, sounds good. Next team, Gio, Daniel. Yes, hi. So it's I would say it's business as usual. We're trying to fix some bugs for uh, uh, for a DataViz team uh, to go on with uh, the various visualizations. Yesterday we have brought on board uh, Nicolas, who's a virologist, and will help us set up potential analysis, hopefully, and will be of support, you know, to discuss uh, um, potential interesting data and uh, help us prioritize and also um, giving us potentially interesting sources more specialized on, on virology. Sounds and great. I would say that's it. Yeah, you. it sounds like you should be as happy as Maya because virologist for, for the task is, is pretty cool. Yeah, and definitely. Doctors? Uh, well, I mean, it's it's fine. It's just a question of uh, finding the time to dedicate to the various tasks as yeah. usual. All right, sounds great. Next task, transmission, Christine. 
Hello. Um, yeah, so we have some exciting news. Uh, we just pushed our prototype search engine to GitHub yesterday, and then we are getting our uh, search results, uh, first search results, hopefully today, and we will be in contact with the lead team to do some visualization. Um, and other than that, we are continue to working on um refining the search engine especially uh, we're using topic models so we're tuning the topic models um and then we're starting to uh trying to get more help and uh especially in nlp uh domain um there's some conversations started uh with other uh with some folks and i will follow that up and hopefully we'll we're trying to kind of shift our focus to that area from here. Yep. Sounds good. It sounds like you need help with NLP. Uh, are, are, do you have enough people that you're talking to or do you still need some, some new people? Right, I do need maybe, because uh, right now people are kind of walk, walking across teams. So it might be helpful to have someone that's- Dedicated? Know, Yes, based on based in our team. Yeah, okay. that would be great. Sounds good. Uh, sorry, actually, it, uh, I was working on it yesterday. Uh, I have, uh, I wanted, I need to find coordinator for Christine and NLP and some designers. So as I understood from uh, coordinators, we are done and uh, NLP and designers are still in progress. Sounds great. All right, sounds good. So uh, next task, vaccines, Ben Sosa. Hey everybody. Uh, so we're starting to ramp up a little bit on this drug dosage extraction project, which is a, a new deliverable. We're gonna think about that likely for round two or round one if we can fit it in, but starting to think about that um, but the main thing that we're focusing on for deliverable one is that we want to reduce the number of false positive drug treatments that are mentioned in our dashboard. And so we're doing that in a couple of ways, one with negation detection and one with better models for extracting those drug treatments. Um, we've got a bunch of people working on that now and we have like everyone's kind of talking on a, this, this channel about uh, coordinating efforts and making sure all the moving parts fit together with like the week that we have left. Quick question, can you explain what negation means in, in simple? Yeah, negation detection is just uh, whenever I see something in the sentence that like negates what I was originally trying to say. So it, typically it'll be like not or like, uh, yeah, not is like the simplest example. So like this drug does not treat this disease. It, with the simple method that we're using now, we wouldn't pick up on the fact that that not is there and that kind of ruins the whole meaning of the sentence for us. So we just need to implement something that'll be able to detect that and say, oh, we don't actually care about the sentence because we saw that like not in there. Um, so this is kind of a classical NLP task. Sorry, Dan, but I mean, the fact, a statement of the kind, this treatment, that, so this drug does not treat the disease is also super interesting, no? Um, yeah, or like this drug was not effective for this. Yeah, it could yeah, be. Yeah, that's... I think that's an interesting fact it's yeah. not to discard i mean you, okay. you should probably classify them in uh, uh supports uh, that this uh this drug treats the disease and does not support that uh, that hypothesis but uh, both are important i would say it's a good point then yeah, we can include that in the true uh, yeah Hey, Malvika here. This is, uh, that's, that's very right, Daniel. That's quite interesting. Uh, ben and I had a discussion about this and I suggested, um, I think you would have seen the uh, first card visualization that Ben had produced along with Sam and others. Um, so I suggested to him that uh, we would add another filter on the top so that, you know, you can sort of filter and see all the drugs that have a positive correlation and all the drugs that have a negative mention. We have some basic results for negation based on, uh, um, you know, string matching that Dan mentioned, and we're trying to incorporate that into the visualization. Ben's working on that uh, at the moment. Uh, I'm not exactly sure about the timelines of when we're expecting that to be available for others to see. Uh, but yeah, that's true, and we are taking care of that. Yeah. 
So that, class, that classification is going to be necessary and we can visualize it in the dashboard as Melody conventions. Uh, as, as far as blockers go, the only, the, the, the main thing is that I think we have like a shortage of people with BERT experience and that's going to become handy in a couple of different places. Isaac has been working hard with us and uh, we really appreciate all his efforts, but I just don't want to stretch him super thin. So if we can have more like NLP, but specifically like BERT type people on board, that could be very helpful. And then we might run into issues of compute resources, but for that, I'm going to try to get asks uh, as specifically as possible from people who need those resources so I can give them to you, Arthur. Sounds good. And it sounds like we have people with resources and we just need to formulate the ask and how we're, we're going to integrate those resources. Same thing for birth people. I think we have enough people. Let's formulate the ask, which I think I'm almost receiving in that a separate conversation. And yeah. Let's let's see if we can help. Sweet. All right. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, Dan, if there's nothing else, uh, I have one uh, potential blocker I'd like to discuss. Here. Yeah, please. Uh, so, um, as you're aware, we're looking at a lot of negation um, detection work, but one blocker that we've seen so far is uh, we've sort of used uh, annotations um, that we've created on our own, or I've reached out to some friends from um, biotechnology who are helping me annotate some of the uh, drug treatment co-occurrences to say whether... Um, you know, each sentence where a drug and a treatment occurs together, whether it's a positive or a negative relation. So uh, for some of the supervised learning approaches that we're investigating for this, it would be really useful if we could get some annotators. Um, so that's the only thing I want to mention. Totally. And I think we have some capacity for that in our team. I think some people have expressed that before and we can message on the general channel. So we can talk more about, about that, but I think we have capacity. And there's also Scale AI, which is this company that's offered to label some data for us. So maybe we can use them as well as a resource. Finally, 10 days after they jumped in, into our Slack, we finally reached the point where we're going to use them. So let's, let's try to. I agree. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> no promises yet. If they're fast enough to, you know, to work with us. That's yeah. a common uh, thing that I'm seeing across different organizations. The, the ability to work as fast as we are definitely defines the relationship. Totally. All right, sounds good, guys. So the only other thing on the agenda is uh, Q&A and further feedback integration on what we can do better as a group. So this is the time for people that are not a part of admin team, people that just are uh, new to this, uh, to ask questions, please speak up. This is your, your time, if you have any questions. All right, I think we're good. Very solid call today. I think we're moving in a very, very fast, um, you know, direction, which is kind of, you know, we're pivoting a lot meanwhile, but we're getting somewhere. So let's, let's try to make sure, um, oh, let's summarize all the uh, follow-up action items for today. Okay, so the action items that I have down is that, uh, that Andrew uh, is working on that, uh, that video uh, orientation. We might need somebody else who's helping with, with that, pulling the visuals that he's been making make that in the video. Um, Archer's gonna post the link to Andrew's video. Archer and Alicia are updating the onboarding flowchart and are gonna get that out to us. Um, we're looking for connectors to help pass people off from onboarding to the team coordinators. I'm going to be making that mail out to less involved folks. Um, and I'm also making a directory for individual slides so that people can mix and match for their own uh, uh, presentations. Uh, risk team is going to have us a first extraction a few days from now. Um, each of the past teams should create a worst case scenario for how many days are needed for the Kaggle uh, submission. <clears throat> and around that also specifically where the blocks are, where, the, where, are the, where are the bottlenecks on the critical path that we most need to address in order to, to reduce time. Um, uh, and I'll add those timeline pieces to the Kaggle submission. Alicia is going to work on, uh, for task ties, getting a dedicated NLP coordinator and some designers. Dan Sosa needs some BERT experienced NLP folks. Um, and we also need to formulate exactly what that BERT ask is. We need annotators around drug correlation. So that's something that if anybody wants to, to help with that, that's great. And we'll also, Dan Sosa is going to reach out to Scale AI around that. 
Um, and then also for all of the coordinators to make sure somebody, if you are running into computational need, um, get those asks both to Archer and to me so that we can get those to the people who are trying to, uh, to request from. Amazing. All right. Sounds great, guys. Thanks again for jumping on a call today. Thanks for everyone who's watching these videos uh, and uh, can join this call. Again, stay healthy, uh, stay sane. Bye.